For Chapter 5 exam, this is what I call the cheater sheet that goes out with the test. <clears throat> so you will get this actual page that I'm showing you right here. I've shrunk it down a little bit so it will fit. But this is a sheet of what you will get on the exam separate to your test. And it will tell you the formulas. So the formulas that you're going to need on this test is the sum and difference of cubes. So there's the sum and the difference of cubes. There's the formula. I'll give you Pascal's triangle. There it is. Started 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. It says to use your graphing calculator on, so I'm giving you specific hints on how to work this. 9, 15, 18, 19, and 22. And I tell you what to do. So in number 9, it says graph the function and observe. So let's look at number 9. Okay, so number 9 says find the real solutions of the equation uh, by graphing. So you can put this in the graphing calculator quite easily. And uh, if we do, of course, don't forget to clear your RAM and reset your defaults. And then go to y equals and type in the equation. So x squared plus x plus 4. And I'm going to press enter and graph. And you notice that it never touches the x-axis. So this is how we would see there's no solution. For the next, I'll highlight these as we go. So we've done 9. Graph and observe. Number 15, you're just going to enter and find the zeros. You do the same thing for 18 and 19. 15, 18, 19, just enter the equation and find your zeros. So let's take a look at that. So here's 15. It says find the roots of the polynomial equation. And it tells you x cubed minus 2x squared plus 10x plus 136 equals 0. So again, we're going to have to enter this in the y equals. And so clear out what's there. And we have something in there right now. So I'm going to hit clear again for my last equation. Now type in x cubed minus 2 x squared plus 10x plus 136. Okay, and press enter. Now I'm going to hit my graph button and just see what it looks like. So the roots are where it's crossing the x-axis. And right now uh, it quit the little uh, scroll, the running cursor that scrolls around right here till it's finished. So this looks like it just goes off and uh, I'm going to zoom to fit to my window. So I'm going to go to zoom and zero and see what that does if I get any more of it. There we go. So we were just getting a small piece of it. So it looks like we have a root and we're going to have more than this, but for right now this gives us a starting point. We just need to find one of them. So um, I'm going to zoom back and try to figure out where that is. So if these were all units of 1, which they should be, it looks like it's at about negative 4, but we can't prove that till we look at the data. So we have to look at the table. Now go to second function and hit your table. And we want to look in our Y column for where it's going. Well, there's another zero right there. Um, excuse me, no it's not. The X is zero. So we want to look for Y equals zero. Sorry about that. So let's go back and let's just scroll through our data. It's getting small. Oh, there it is. There's Y equals zero right there. And so what is our x value when y is 0? Negative 4. So that did look like negative 4, and here we prove it is negative 4. So this is our first 0, where it's crossing the x-axis, that gives us a springboard to solve this problem and find the others. So now we're going to notice that's where I'm showing you to hunt it down in your table value, so there it was. So we know it's negative 4, so using synthetic division now you want to take that out. And what's left over? You want to keep going till you just have the three terms plus the 0. The last term, that plus 0, is always your remainder. 
and it should be zero because it was a factor of that polynomial. Being that it's a third a cubic equation, it means we're going to have three zeros. So we've got one of them right now, negative four. So that came from x plus four, right? So that's one of our factors. So we have two more to get. So that's why we use synthetic division. Here's what's left over. Now that's a quadratic, right? x squared minus 6x plus 34. Now we're going to use, because we can't find two factors of 34 that add up to negative 6. It can't be done. I already figured that out. Now you're going to use your quadratic function. Plug it in, calculate, and then you get these two answers, 3 plus or minus 5i. And so there's our three answers the original, negative 4, and then using the quadratic equation on what was left over, 3 plus 5i and 3 minus 5i. And that's how you do this problem. Okay, so now back to 18 and 19. We're still just going to enter the equation and find the zeros. So let's look at 18 and 19. Okay, here's 18. Um, it says find all the zeros of the equation. And there it is. So we know we're going to have four zeros because it's a power of four. My leading term is power of four. So now we're going to plug it into the graph. And um, let's look at what happens. So I'm going to clear go to my y equals and clear this out and type in my new equation. So I'm going to pause and put it in. OK, so now I've typed it in. There it is. And I'm going to press Enter. And I'm going to graph to see what it looks like. Oh, it looks like we can quickly get, and notice my little running cursor in the upper right-hand corner finished, so it's through graphing. We only see a portion of what the graph is, but we can see we've got just got to get a starting point. We've got two really good points right here for starting points. It should come right out. Let's zoom in and see what this looks like. Zoom zero. And it's figuring right now, calculating, thinking, and here it goes. All right, uh, that's not as helpful as I want it to be, but we could go to the table and take a look at it. Let's do that. It should be like uh, about a negative 1 and a positive 3, maybe, something like that, but let's see. So go to the table and let's look for the zeros over here. So it looks like it's getting smaller, so I'm going to keep going down. There's a zero right there at one. Hmm, one. And it looked like there was some a negative number. But we don't see any other zeros. So it means we could reset our table values. Let's try it at a half and see if we get anything. It says set your table values to a half. How do you do that? Well, I give you um, the instructions and let's go to that. Oh, before we do, make sure you mark your one zero. So it's one. So that would come, it would be a one from x minus one. Okay, and um, all right, so let's go on. Okay, so I'm seeing a little discrepancy, so I'm going to zoom this back out. So I'm going to go to um, zoom and six. That's that standard where we started. And now we just got the one at one, but we didn't get the second one. So what's up with that? So it looks like it falls right between one and two. So I'm going to set my units to one half, okay? So there's no discrepancy right now. Um, I've already worked this out previously, so I know it's one and a half, but I wanna show you what makes you think that way. We got the one and we never got another zero, but we know if that's one on the left and that's two, then it's probably at one and a half. So let's set our table units to 
0.5 to a half. And let's set our graph measures on the x-axis to, to 0.5 and see if we can get it to show up then. Okay, so let me pause the video. Okay, so I've gone to this page and now I tell you how to change the table units if necessary. So I'm telling you how to do it. Press the second key, then table set. So second and table set. It's this one right there, the window button. And it tells you uh, to arrow down to table equal, right there, table equal. And we want to change that one to 0.5. And press enter. All right, and then I show you how to change it back. You would just go back here and change it back to one. Okay, so now let's graph it again and see what happens. And now I'm going to view my table. It's a second function, table. Now notice that all my units are one half. I should show that other zero now. So I'm gonna scroll down. There's one zero and there's the next zero, one and one and a half. So there they both are. So now I can take that out I can take that out, so I can do the x minus 1 and x minus 1.5, okay? And I told you, set them and, and graph. So we did, and then you want to take both of those out. So take out your 1 with synthetic, synthetic division, your 1 and a half with synthetic division, and you keep going till you have a quadratic. Well, on all these, there was just four x's, so we've got two of them. After pulling those out, it should be just a quadratic because there's your 2x's x squared so 2x squared plus 50 now you're just going to solve that but for x just solve for x and you end up with positive negative 5i so that's how you work that one okay and number 19 you're going to work the same way um, we didn't have to change the table units on that Okay, our last problem, number 22, says enter the x and y's in L1 and L2 and do the regression. And uh, just know that I've shown you how to do those, how to enter a list, stat, press enter, into your list, that's your L1 and L2. So you enter L1, that's all your x values, and L2 is all your y values. And then you do your regressions. Well, here's your steps for the regression. Press your stat, arrow to calculate, and error to your choice of which regression do you want, linear, quadratic, or cubic. And uh, don't forget to turn your plots on, too. And um, so uh, to, then you enter your equation, y equals, and look at whichever one matched the closest. You go to y equals, pick that equation, and that's your answer. So I'll try to put, uh, the bell has rang, so I've got to stop. My break's over. Um, I'll add a solution to this um, this evening. So that's going to conclude this help video, and thank you for watching.